Hey, it's Jeff Gibbons here with a Sound Design Basics tutorial. I'm going to be using Cubase Pro, but this of course would apply to any program that you're using, as long as it has the ability to import a video file. So my first approach to videos, whether it's an animation or live action, is to look at the scenes that I'm working on and establish what I need for ambience. So these are sound effects that happen consistently throughout the duration of that scene and they kind of establish a tone for that space. We even call the specific ambience in a room, room tone. And so the room tone is usually something to do with air conditioning or heating or any other sounds that are consistent in that space. If it's outside, do I have running water of some sort? Or is there a slight breeze? Is there wind? Uh, wind rustling through the trees or crickets at night and all of these things that help the viewer establish their space not only visually but with sound and I am mostly working with sound effects libraries I have some great sound effects libraries one of them is called the general and I'll include a link to the general in the notes this is a really famous sound effects library and it's not cheap but it is absolutely worth it and you will find a sampling of a ton of different things in there. So whether you need footsteps or underwater sounds or gunshots or cars. And then the other place that you can find sound effects is online, of course. And there's places like freesound.org that have excellent sound effects that are user uploaded and are free to download and put into your projects. And then there's other places like SoundSnap where you can pay for membership and find sound effects so there's plenty of places to find sound effects and then of course you can go record your own if you have some kind of device like a zoom recorder or your iphone so let's get right into it let's have a look at a little bit more of a practical project so this is a video we shot for a company called biopod this is how we might approach a live action project that just needs some simple sound effects. So the first thing I do is go through and put in the room tone that I need. In a scene like this, we're in a living room with a kitchen in the background. So I've got some fridge sound room tone that just seems kind of realistic and we place that in the background. So let's have a listen to that. As we go from the living room, it goes into a slightly different room tone and I like this slightly different room tone because it establishes that we are no longer in that living room area. So if I press play we can hear the transition between these two ambiences. And then we go back. Back to the original ambience. So room tone plays a really kind of subconscious familiarity to spaces. You're establishing something in one room and then establishing a different tone in another room. So all I have to do is establish my room tone in one spot for a scene, and then I can copy that over anytime that room pops up again. And then as far as sound effects goes, you can hear all sorts of sound effects in this one. Uh, there's this ridiculous scene where the fish gets flushed down the toilet. Of course, no fish were actually flushed. It was a piece of cheese, but let's have a look here. So I've got a bunch of sound effects that I had to find. Uh, one of them was pouring of some liquid. So you hear that right here. We've got the toilet being flushed and then the actual or the toilet handle and then the toilet flush. I wanted a little bit more squeak in there. So I added a metal squeak underneath. So you hear that one by itself. And that one just worked out perfectly as far as the squeak goes, because it kind of goes down and up. A little bit ridiculous. If I wanted that, of course, I could either just cut it and move this over a little bit so that the squeak lines up perfectly. And then I've got the flush sound with it. And in this case, I just took the sound of a dish or a glass being placed on a counter, a sound effect from my sound effect library. We've got some other sound effects underneath. We've got this water sucking sound as the toilet is being flushed. And then we've got a hit, this big boom that happens to enhance the drama of the scene. And you put those all together and this is what we get for a sound design for this scene. And then we go back to the ambience. So let's listen to it with the dialogue. We paid our respects and gave him a proper burial. 
I should have bought a bigger bowl. That is our sound design for this one little scene. Let's have a look at this animation project. I've done music and sound design for animation for a company in Japan for about 10 years now. And this company is incredible. They've got this ESL program that goes all over the world. It's called Grapeseed. And the production value is extremely high. So this one is a song-based video. And then they just needed some sound effects to go with it. extremely fun stuff from a sound design point of view uh, and really lets me get creative. You can really think outside the box with this kind of thing. In this first opening scene I've got a nice beautiful outdoor country scene and then we fade into a bedroom and obviously this isn't completely natural because we're going through glass but I treated this as if it should be a gradual progression from the sound of the country outside to the sound of the country as heard through the bedroom windows. I've made an, a track over here called Ambience and I've got two Ambience tracks in this project so far and that just allows me to layer multiple ambiences in scenes where I need more than one. And most often in, in bigger productions I will have a, a number of Ambience tracks depending on the complexity of each scene. I'm going to delete this Country Day Ambience and then I'm going to drop it in from scratch. So I'm going to go first off to the Media Bay. And to get to the Media Bay, we go Media, Media Bay, or Command M. Once I'm in Media Bay, you need to find on your hard drive where your sound effects are. And right now I've got my Sound Effects Master folder selected as the place that it's searching. And then what I do is I go up to this top little search browser and I'm going to type in country because I know I've got some sound effects in there that are the country. So let's have a listen. So I like this country day ambience best right here. And what I can do is just click and drag it in uh, to my project. I can also, from the media bay, I can just select a portion down here. I'm mousing over the top of this effect preview down at the bottom. So if I mouse over and just stretch out, I get locators. And then I can just click and drag that into my project. So there is a chunk of that original file. It's still gigantic. And so all I'm going to do is take maybe, maybe one of these quieter sections right here. And then I'm going to cut this other side of it and move it over. And I'm going to put it right at the beginning of the file. Now don't forget, one of my favorite features of the new Cubase is, and in Nuendo, is the ability to turn on this edit mode. So we go up to transport and use video files edit mode. And then now what I can do is I can drag this fade and I can see as I drag the fade, I get to the brightest part of the scene, which is right about here. The country day is at its fullest volume. And then I press play. And then as soon as it, the birds get to their fullest, we start going through this glass window. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this chunk of audio and move that over. I'm just going to give this a different color right now, uh, just so, so you can see what I'm doing differently. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to res resize this chunk of audio so that it goes a little bit farther. And I'm going to resize this chunk of audio so it goes a little bit into the the first scene and I'm going to stretch this chunk of audio so that it goes a little bit beyond my next scene. So I, we can see I need the sound of these birds extending right into this train scene. And now what I can do is click on this chunk of audio and I can do something called direct offline processing. So direct offline processing is a way to process a chunk of audio with an effect of any sort. You are printing the sound effect to that chunk of audio. And the great thing about this method is you can come back and undo any of those changes at any point. I'm going to click on the chunk of audio, press F7, and up pops the direct offline processing window. So there are some things you can do with this process button right here, like reverse and pitch shift, uh, things like that. And I use these all the time. And then you can also go and choose the plugin window where you can use any effect that you have loaded in Cubase, which is awesome. So you can do things like put reverb on a sound effect, or here we're going to actually put EQ on a sound effect because I want to make it sound like these birds have been filtered through the window that this camera is passing through. So we go from outside into the world to inside into this bedroom. We are going to filter the sounds of these birds by dragging down the high frequencies. And I've got a simple EQ window that I went to under plugin, 
Studio EQ, and I click on a control point and I bring this down and I can filter out the high frequency. So let's press play. I can change the width right here. So let's bring the sounds way down and maybe a little bit less exaggerated with the Q value. And I can hold shift and click on this point and drag down to change that Q value, by the way. So let's make it just the high frequency, something like that. And I'm going to press, and maybe I'll bring this one down as well. It's a bit of a, with a bit of a shelf. And then I'm going to hit apply. And watch what happens to the sound effect. Now that sound effect gets changed right there. And I can close this window and I can hear the change right here. And if at any point I decide that I maybe took that a little too far, I can press F7. I can see the effect that I've done and I can change it a little bit. So I can bring this up just like that and hit apply. And now it goes back to slightly less processing. Or maybe I bring this up one more time like this and press apply. And I exaggerate those high frequencies. But obviously you can see what this allows you to do is it allows you to make changes with an effect, process a chunk of audio, but then have the ability to come back at any point and change those processes entirely. You can even have stacked processes over on the left hand side here and go back and change any one of those at any point. So this is one of the most powerful sound design features of Cubase and Nuendo and it's amazing. So I'm going to go back to where it was. I'm going to hit apply. Now you can see where I've got these two chunks of audio. One is overlapping the other and if I press X we get the crossfade. And watch what I can do. I can take this crossfade and begin this descent into this EQ'd or this filtered country sound effect right about the point where this, this uh, window pops in. So we feel like we're in a drone maybe outside and then we're flying through this window somehow magically. So I'm going to make it so right before this chunk of video or right before this, the frame of the door pops in, I'm going to start the crossfade into the filtered effect. And because I am on transport, use video follows edit mode, all of my edits in Cubase as I resize things will scrub through the video. And I'm going to let this affected bird sound fully heard by the time we get to right about here. So now let's have a listen. Perfect crossfade into the affected version. And if I want the volume to be a little bit less as well, I can just bring down the volume. Perfect. And then I go to the end of the scene and I can see that I want these bird sounds to continue right to about where the train pops in or exactly where the train pops in. So I'm going to zoom way in and adjust that effect until where the train pops in, which is right there. Perfect. So now we've got the ambience set for this first scene. And the next scene, I actually don't have any ambience because we've got mostly train sounds kind of dominating things. But I do pop back into the bedroom. And so what I'd probably want to do is have this affected chunk of audio start exactly where that we, we pop back to the bedroom. So right there. Perfect. So let's see what else I put into this beginning chunk of video. Other than the ambience, the next thing that you see that I've got here is a bunch of train sound effects. So the first sound effect I've got is just a steam train. And then I've layered it with another train sound effect. And then one more train sound effect right here. So I've got some steam sound effects that come in next. That is just a steam sound effect that I've got the volume going up and down on to exaggerate what the, the smokestack is doing. And then I've got my train steam whistle that I could pan a little bit to the right. So let's have a look at how we pan things. So you can see I've got it starting right when that guy pops in. So what we do there is we click this little drop down button on the track and I can see my automation lane pops up. So if I click underneath where it says volume, I can change it to standard panner, pan left and right. And then what I usually do is make the window nice and big. And then I can take these points and start from scratch. So let me show you what it looks like when you start from scratch. You're going to see your sound effect is panned right in the middle. Click over top of the line, it turns into a pencil. And then now I can take this chunk, this little sound effect and make sure it starts a little bit to the right. 
So I can see these numbers right there, R39, a little bit to the right. This would be hard right, and this would be hard left. So I'm gonna start a little bit to the right, and then I want that sound effect to stay to the left there, all the way to the end of this little part right here, which is right there. So automation, very important, but very easy to use with these little points and with Video Follows Edit Mode turned on. And now if I put all of those sound effects together, we've got the train sounds, So you can see this gets fairly complicated. I've got train sounds that have been layered. I've got other sounds that are popping in as well. For me, it's all about using these chunks of audio and crossfade, crossfading, and then using these volume changes right on the chunk of audio right there, and then also using direct offline processing. So hopefully that gets you going on doing some basic sound effects for your video projects, whether they're animations or live action. I approach them all the same. I start with an ambience track or a bunch of ambience tracks for each scene, defining the space and the sound of the space that's happening in that scene. And then I add all of the other sound effects to that scene in layers. So I hope that helps you out and hit the subscribe button for future videos. And thanks for watching.